Now the next step is due diligence. Uh, we have divided this in three steps. The first one is researching about company. Uh, then researching about the security frameworks. Whether to go with ISO 27001 or to go with SOC 2. Uh, then we search on the SOC 2 providers or vendors. Now, in the due diligence steps. Uh, for the first one, this research about company. We check what is the company goals, vision, mission, and how the company generates the revenue. Uh, we understand the software products, uh, their uh, security functionality, the product features, and how company operates, uh, what are the different teams, the software team, IT team, HR, finance, uh, and all day-to-day -day operations, uh, what is the infrastructure, uh, where the company data is hosted, what are the different cloud providers, or it's hosted on-premise, the infrastructure diagram, and what are the various tools involved in day-to-day -day operations. For the second step, researching on security frameworks, we check the, com we compare the soft, uh, software with ISO 27001. Uh, we check what is the difference between attestation and certification, and then we decide what the soft 2 scope agreement, what is team availability, because we need support from various teams, uh, for the SOC 2 or for ISO, for both we need support from uh, IT team or development team or HR team. So for each, uh, each of every team, we need some uh, PIC from each team to assist us on the security process and to define the policies. And the last one would be uh, researching on the SOC 2 providers. Now here, we need a SOC 2 vendor that can assist us to get the attestation uh, from a licensed CPA. Okay, and then we just compare some of the software providers online, get the price quotation, but connect with a salesperson, and then compare the quotation, uh, and then uh, start a software journey with a, a selected vendor. Now, research about company, we are checking business goals and objectives. So, here we are researching uh, more towards a company business, uh, what are the goals, uh, the vision and mission. Uh, so if you go to this page, uh, it uh, details out about the various products uh, of Juristech. And uh, in about a section, we have a complete snapshot of uh, this company. When the company started, what are the various products they have rolled out in which year. Uh, and if we uh, scroll down, what are the different things they offer and the vision and mission statement, and the company leaders, okay? So, we also have here the list of geographies their company is present. So, they have the presence uh, in these continents, and their values, uh, and what awards and all uh, they have as of now. So, you can check all the details here. We also search on what are the current competitors for this company? So just a quick look, what are the competitors and what they're trying to do? Uh, their feature, their product features, how secure are they? Uh, and we just want to know the current security posture uh, of these companies as, as well. Just This is just to give uh, a comparison overview. We are not digging out too much details here, but we just want to know a high level details of the competitors, okay? So there we have uh, in research about company, uh, we are just uh, taking a high level overview of the company current business, the competitors, the goal, vision, and mission. The next one would be research about company products. Uh, so we have details of products listed uh, under solutions, and we can see all the details of the products. We are more looking into what other security features uh, the company is offering. So first, we check what are the application functionality, like what is the login uh, mechanism, how secure it is, uh, does the company uh, protect uh, the accounts with two-factor authentication, what are the other security measures in place. Uh, if a customer is applying for a loan, then there would be some kind of upload functionality to upload the documents, uh, how the company handles the file management uh, what are the other security features, application architecture, authentication, authorization, 
and how the data is encrypted, uh, that means sensitive data, uh, what are the application logs and monitoring policy. So, from product perspective, we are checking, the first thing is application functionality and the security features of the products. Now, once we are done with uh, product security features and checking the application end-to-end functionality of different products, we check what are the company structure, uh, what are the different teams that operates in Juristech. Now, we start with top-level management. That may be uh, CEO, CTO, CISO, or C-level profiles, or BU heads. Then middle-level management, uh, project managers and senior managers are responsible to deliver the product or project. Uh, sales and pre-sales, they take care of uh, digital marketing and giving demos to potential leads. Software development team, they customize the software as per the requirement from clients and deliver the project. This contains QA testers and DevOps team also. IT team, that takes care of infrastructure, all the servers, database, cloud. Uh, so this team take care of all the infrastructure. The support team, when the project is live and if there are some issues or some enhancements or some new change requests, uh, this team take care. So there might, there might be some ticketing management tool or help desk uh, from where the customer can raise uh, enhancement request or change request. So this team take care of such enhancements. Uh, there are HR finance, finance team that take care of employee onboarding. Uh, payroll related activities, uh, providing training to employees and some other tasks related to HR department or finance department. We also have facilities management team uh, like security guards and vendors that manage uh, premise for the employees. Now let's dive deep into company infrastructure. Let's say company data is hosted on premise. Example, when a fresh project comes to this company, the development servers are hosted internally in the physical data center. The internal applications like employee management, which manages employee attendance, the payrolls, the leaves, and all employee-related functionalities, these are internal to company, and it's hosted internally. Now, some of the company data is hosted on different clouds like Azure, AWS, uh, and company uses uh, Office 365 for the communication. So Outlook and Microsoft Teams and other office-related suit products for their communication. Now let's assume customer data uh, is managed by customer. And we have some of the clients that say, okay, our customers, you manage the production data. So we have both kind of mixed things here. The customer data, which is highly sensitive. Uh, this company is taking care of the customer data for some of the clients. And some of the clients... The, the company, Juristech, they just give the software product to them and the company deploy these uh, products at the premise of the customer. So customer takes care of uh, production data by themselves. They don't handle the production data to Juristech. So we have a mixed scenario here. Now, this is just a sample infrastructure diagram for Juristech. All critical application data is hosted internally on premise. So all the project files, uh, the important documents are hosted on SharePoint or internal file shares. The development servers, database servers, all the source code, uh, development and SIT environments, U18 production, all critical data is hosted internally. So employee when connecting to this internal network, they need VPN. And let's say VPN is open VPN and it's protected by two-factor authentication. Now, employee may be of two types. One working directly from office and other employees working remotely from their home network. Now, employees which are working from their home or working remotely, Azure VDI uh, is the jump host. So first, employee needs to connect to Azure VDI and from Azure VDI, they can connect to VPN and then they can access company internal data. Employee which are coming directly to office, they can directly connect to 
uh, the network uh, and all the public applications, the non-critical data, like employee management, some other data, they are hosted directly uh, with tight access. They don't need to connect to VPN and go through it. Office 365, Teams, Outlook, Word, uh, employee have to log in, protected by a multi-factor authentication, and then they can directly access. So this is just a sample. Uh, there are some uh, mission critical data, so it's not hosted publicly. Employee needs VPN to connect. And some other non-critical data, which is required for day-to-day -day operations and operational activities, uh, it's hosted publicly. Employee can directly access it, but with proper authentication and authorization, also protected with uh, two-factor authentication. Now for day-to-day -day operations, these are the tools and technologies used for office communication. Let's say they are using Microsoft Office 365 suit for VPN to connect to their internal network. They are using OpenVPN to manage the employee attendance, leave system, employee details. They have their in-house web and mobile application. When customer needs to raise any change request, they have a web application which is hosted publicly. Uh, for DevOps tools, they're using GitLab, uh, Visual Studio Code, Docker. So these are just sample tools. For antivirus, let's say they're using McAfee Total Protection as an antivirus software. Uh, for cloud or on-prem, uh, they're using, let's say, a Hyper-V hosted on Microsoft Server Operating System. Uh, it's, so for some of the clients, they're managing UAT in production. Uh, and other clients, we have only example a development servers with us and the production and UAT is handled by the client themselves, not by this uh, jurisdiction. Now for project management, let's say they're using Jira. Uh, 